Every year when it comes time to start evaluating NFL draft prospects, we always look to the small schools, the non-major conference, non-power conference schools, because we're looking to out-sleuth the other, and we're trying to sit there and say, hey, we found this guy first, or we were big on this guy, and he's going to be one of those guys that didn't get a lot of name recognition while he was in college, but they end up being outstanding pros. And one of those guys I think this year is fitting into that category is Vernon Butler. He's six foot three, 325 pounds, senior defensive tackle from Louisiana Tech. You know, a guy coming from a non-power conference school. But as the college season progressed, and in particular once you started to get into the draft process of the Senior Bowl and the Combine, a guy that I think has picked up quite a bit of momentum, quite a bit of steam. Maybe it's more so because of the fact that the NFL draft media is starting to catch up to the reality just a little bit of how maybe scouting departments were already viewing him throughout the league. A much better player than you may have thought, um, but the question is, now are we starting to get into the category because he's a smaller school player and we want to sit there and hype up these type of guys, these underdogs in a certain way? Is the hype getting a little too big and is the hype getting a little carried away and is the reality of the player not matching the hype that we're starting to hear? You know, and I think that's a very, very interesting question when it comes to Vernon Butler. When I watch him on film, the first thing that jumps out to you is his size. Six foot three, 325 pounds. This is a mountain of a man. This is a big dude and very, very strong at that. And at times when he uses that strength and size very, very well, he can be a freaking load to handle. A absolute load to handle. In particular, when he gets his proper leverage, when he gets his momentum going, he uses that size and strength. He can be a really effective bull rusher. I mean, he can put offensive guards and centers into the running back, into the quarterback. He demonstrated that ability at times at Louisiana Tech, and now you might sit there and say, eh, you know, that's playing against lesser level competition, but even when he played against the Mississippi State, you saw that at times. His guy did, his propensity at times to get a really monstrous bull rush and just be unblockable one-on-one. -on -one. You saw it at times. I also like his snap recognition skills, too, a guy that's pretty good of getting off the snap. I mean, he's not incredibly explosive, and I don't think he's a super athlete or anything like that. But when you're talking about a size, strength, power type of guy, and he can get off the snap quickly and beat the offensive lineman to a spot and engage the offensive lineman before they engage him, that gives him the power, that gives him the control, that gives him the strength, if you will, to use his strength. And he does a really good job of getting off of the ball. He does a really good job of anticipating and recognizing the snap. It's very rare that I saw him at Louisiana Tech in 2015 be the last guy off of the snap. Usually he was the first guy off of the snap. I think as a pass rusher, he's got a really good motor. You know, again, he's not an incredible athlete, which, you know, to be fair, he's probably a pretty good athlete being 6'3", 325. Uh, but a really good pass rush motor, a guy that when he does get engaged, doesn't sit there and give up right away. This is a guy that continues to fight, that continues to try and come. Those are skills that suit him well as a run defender as well. Also really like what I project to be scheme versatility. I think he could play all over the place in the 3-4. You could play him at the nose. You know, that may be his best position at the NFL level. I think he could be equally as effective potentially as a 3-4 defensive end playing a five technique type of role. Uh, and in a 4-3, I think he's a guy that could play a nose tackle and be a force there, especially if you've got a one-gap penetrator playing next to him on the inside. You know, this is a guy that it'll be hard to hold up against him when he's being single blocked. Uh, so a guy that could play all over the place. So, you know, a team running a 4-3 or a 3-4 can go about grading him where they feel he is as a player. So it expands the amount of teams that he could fit. The amount of teams that could be interested in him is only going to naturally help his draft stock. Uh, in terms of questions, though, this guy is far from a finished product. And the way I see some of the buzz starting to be generated about him, I think it's starting to get a little carried away. Um, you know, People are talking about he's a really, really good athlete for his size. I think he's an adequate athlete. I don't think he's a special athlete. Like, I've heard some comparisons to Dontari Poe. You know, another guy, this guy came from Memphis. This was a guy that was kind of flying under the radar a little bit. But then he went to the combine and he just blew shit up. And now people really started to pay, pay attention to him, take notice of him. And, you know, it, it's one of these things, though, is that Dontari Poe was bigger, stronger, quicker, faster, and much more explosive than Vernon Butler. But the comparisons are appropriate. Yeah, I mean, people forget just how, 
you know, how amazing and outstanding of an athlete Dontari Poe is. Vernon Butler is not that level of athlete, I assure you. He's an adequate athlete, but he's not a great athlete. And it shows up a lot of times in his lateral agility. You know, for a guy that's 325 pounds, you're not going to accept, expect him to be a pursuit monster, a guy that sits there and makes a lot of plays when they run away from him. But at times, you have to be able to do that. And I thought he struggled with that. Um, you know, also when you're talking about him, I didn't think he was as sound of a tackler as he should have been for a guy that's so big and supposed to be so strong. You know, a guy that struggled to get his get himself centered, a guy that at times could be a little reachy in terms of arm tackles, and had guys run through tackles maybe more than they should have, in part that was at times not putting himself in a good position and not taking good angles to the ball carrier. Uh, but what really concerns me is, is that a guy that's this big should be just a monster run defender, and he's just not. I think part of that is because he doesn't maintain a really good pad level. Leverage at times can be a problem. He can get a bit upright. It's not as much of a problem as I've seen with other prospects so far in this defensive line class, but it can be a concern. You know, you want you want to be big, but you want to make yourself small, if that makes sense. And at times he can make himself bigger than he needs to. Uh, but for a guy, again, that's 6'3", 325 pounds, and we're talking about his size and we're talking about his strength, this is a guy that got pushed off the spot quite a bit. And some of that may have been because he wasn't playing to his strengths. He was trying to be more of a one-gap penetrator than he should have been. This was a guy that was trying to be a bigger time pass rusher than he actually should have been. But a guy that I don't think always used his size and his strength to his advantage. And a guy that at times struggled to anchor a guy that could get pushed back a little bit. A guy in particular that if he got his body turned one way, the offensive lineman could get up on him and seal him, push him off of the out of the way entirely. You know, and a guy that should have pulled up better at the point of attack in the phone booth than he actually does. And some of that comes with awareness too. A guy that allowed a lot of um, running backs and tight ends to chip at him and take his legs out from under him, I think that ties into awareness and not understanding what's coming and not understanding how to position himself to avoid it. You know, again, a guy that ended up on his back, ended up on his side more than he frankly should have. And in terms of overall awareness, you know, a guy that could be so consumed with trying to worry about his one-on-one -on -one matchup where I talked about with Jerron Reed and Jonathan Bullard, guys that could sit there and be engaged in this one-on-one -on -one battle, but at the same time still be focused on the quarterback, still be focused on the ball carrier, paying attention to where the ball is going, where the ball is. And Vernon Butler at times would be so consumed by trying to get penetration, he'd finally shed the blocker and he's in the backfield. But unfortunately, the running back or the quarterback has scrambled five yards behind him already and he's too late to catch up. Or other times he seems to get fooled in the read option game. You know, it's something that you know, can be coachable, but sometimes those instincts are natural, and either you have them or you don't. And at this stage of his career, I don't think Vern, Vernon Butler has them in great abundance. In terms of an NFL comparison, you'll hear Dontari Poe because they're big dudes that came from smaller, non-power conference schools. But that's about where the comparisons end. Dontari Poe, again, I will emphasize, was bigger, stronger, quicker, faster, much more of an explosive athlete than a Vernon Butler is. And I thought Don Tari Poe at Memphis utilized his weight and his size better than a Vernon Butler does. In terms of an NFL comparison, I will go with another non-power conference player back when he was at that school anyways, um, and a guy that had big, huge size and looked the part, and that's Star Latulule from the Carolina Panthers. You know, in that 2013 draft that was very weak, Latulule ended up falling to 14 to the Carolina Panthers in part because of a concern about a heart condition. I don't think Vernon Butler has any of those concerns, mind you. But I see a lot of similarities in their game on film. Uh, size and playing strength. Guys that are really, really big that look like men, look like fucking monsters in the middle and can play very, very strong and really effective with the bull rush. I think Latulale was a little more effective with his bull rush, but Vernon Butler, like I said, when he, when he gets it right, he can be a force to block one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I don't think he faced off with nearly as much double team blocking as a star Latulale did. You know, and in part, I would say that Latulale in general faced a little bit of better competition back then at Utah than Vernon Butler did at Louisiana Tech, which that's going to be some concern too. And a question mark is what type of competition did he face? Uh, but guys with good burst off of the snap, you know, at times. 
could sit there and win plays and make plays happen just because of that initial snap recognition, that initial short area burst as much as anything. But two guys, especially as the game goes along, they could struggle with leverage. Their pad level can get very high, and they could be taken out of the play. They could be moved off the spot a little bit more, and you might think for guys of that size, even though I think that's a bigger problem for Butler than it was Latou Lule. Uh, and both guys that need technique work as pass rusher, and in particular developing pass rush moves. Um, you know, I think Latou Lule should have been a better pass rusher at the NFL level than he has been so far. I think Vernon Butler has a little more pass rush potential than Latou Lule does. You know, it's not a perfect comparison, but it's a pretty good comparison. There are a lot of similarities there. Um, you know, this is somebody that the scouting community already knew about, I think, in terms of NFL teams. Uh, the media is just starting to kind of catch up to the reality. If he would have played at a bigger school, he would have gotten much more buzz a lot earlier on, which could have been positive or potentially detrimental to his draft stock, depending on the perspective that you take. You just can't teach a guy's size and strength like he's got. He's 6'3", he's 200, 325 pounds. You just can't teach that. Those type of guys that have that size and strength and can actually play don't grow on trees, and Vernon Butler's got it. And for his size, he's got decent burst, you know, especially in terms of when you talk about his snap recognition and his ability to get off the ball. It's pretty good. Uh, adequate athleticism, not special athleticism, but more than enough for being a guy that's that big. A lot of people are going to project as a nose tackle either in a 4-3 or a 3-4 or even as a 5 technique uh, defensive end in a 3-4. Um, very raw technique, though, as a pass rusher. I'm not sure just how much the upside is there as a pass rusher. And, you know, the thing is, is that whereas Latulule was a monster against the run, I think sometimes people assume because of the size and the playing style that Vernon Butler would be better against the run than he really is. He's not as stout as a run defender as you think. There are times, again, that he doesn't anchor well at times that he gets taken off of the spot times where he's so concerned about trying to penetrate that a running back or a quarterback goes right where he just was, where he isn't now. Um, for a guy of this size, you'd want him to be a little bit of a better run defender than he actually is. And I do think that's a concern because this is a guy that maybe is trying to focus too much on being one type of player when his reality is that he's somebody else. You know, and to me, it's all about accentuating the positives and hiding the negatives as much as you can. And when it comes to Vernon Butler, at times, he seems to want to play more as an athletic penetrator than as a big physical uh, stuffer and stopper. You know, you got to play to your strengths. Your strengths are that you're a big physical stuffer and stopper. Then maybe that can allow you to occasionally penetrate. Not the other way around. You shouldn't be trying to penetrate like you're a 290-pound three-technique defensive tackle and then use that to set up your run stuffing. I don't know about that. I think he can be an NFL stud if he's coached up. It's going to take time because he's very raw in his technique. He's got a lot of work to do in some very important areas. But the, but the potential is there. The possibilities are there. You have a great physical package to work with. And some of those things, again, you just can't teach. And, you know, again, for teams running a 3-4 or a 4-3, he's probably going to be a pretty good fit. I think there's a very good chance that Vernon Butler ends up going in the top 20 uh, picks or so in the 2016 NFL draft. And if he does, I won't knock teams for doing so because, again, I see that upside there. I see that potential there. If I'm grading just strictly off of film, Vernon Butler is actually a second-round prospect, and that is the truth of it. I have a second-round grade on him. Now, for me, I probably would rank him as a player in this draft, somewhere between 20 to 40, because here's the truth of the matter. Even though you'll have 31 players going the first round of this draft, I can assure you, based off of what I see out of this draft class, there most certainly will not be 31 guys that carry a first-round grade for me. I'll be lucky if I come up with 20, if I'm being so honest. It might be closer to 16, 17, maybe 18, if we're pushing it. So Vernon Butler's on that next level, you know, those guys that carry a second-round game, but with real first-round potential. When all is said and done, I think he ends up, you know, in terms of what I think of him, in terms of my big board defensive tackle rankings, defensive lineman rankings, I think he ends up as either the third or fourth best defensive tackle in this draft. I've got him behind right now, Andrew Billings and Jerron Reed but ahead of several other guys that have gotten some buzz and attention. And I've still got some other guys to watch, too. He'll probably end up somewhere third, fourth, maybe fifth on the list. Right now, based off of who I've evaluated, he's third. You know, I've got a second-round grade on him, an early, mid-second round grade on him, but a guy that, again, I think has the possibilities of going in the top 20 in the draft. And I won't necessarily knock a team for doing so, especially if it's like Detroit at number 16. 
I just think that when he gets into an NFL program, he has to be coached up. It can take a little bit to get his full potential out of him, and they've got to teach him how to play to his strengths and stop trying to play uh, to something else that he frankly really isn't.